This week on My Cramp Garage, we're going to talk about oil lines, send and return, we're going to talk about the intake, and we're going to talk about the electronics built into the bike. Stay tuned. Alrighty, here we have the send line, um, which uses uh, AN fitting 90 off of the braided hose that uh, came with a kit that I purchased. And uh, all of these items will be in the description of where I got them from, sizes and everything. And a lot of people have asked, where do I tap off the oil line? Well, I found spots so far that works pretty good. Right down the bottom of the bike here, the banjo bolt and fitting, and then an adapter. Um, did a measurement there and it was about 60 PSI of pressure for the oil. Um, goes in a restrictor so it should be fine for what we're doing. Um, while we're on this side you can see we kind of have some goop left over but it's uh, feeding right into the oil dipstick location for the return line and this is a fairly large fittings for that. Um, also link uh, we didn't use the uh, well at first we used the stock oil dipstick and kind of drilled and tapped it out I uh, wouldn't recommend doing that, it doesn't work very well. We'll put a link in the description of the parts we used for that guy. But as you can see, it kind of goes through and comes back. And goes right into the bottom of the turbo there. And you want to try and keep that flow and drain slanted so that it drains properly. And that can be probably pretty tricky. You'll notice it's really close to the exhaust as well, we haven't had any issues yet, but uh, you know, fingers crossed on that. So you can see here's the finished intake. We use the stock bolt holes and kind of just fabbed up one. And we had to do some reinforcements on the welds in order to keep it from breaking apart and having issues. And you can see uh, the coupler there is actually a radiator hose that we used. Uh, since the size is about an inch and a half, it was tough to get the right size going. Now we're just going to take uh, the intake off and show you guys uh, um, how we uh, constructed that and what it looks like when everything's apart. Alright, so now you guys can kind of see what we all did. We just ground out the outline of the intake using a template and, uh, and we goosenecked it down. Had a little blow off valve there. Seems to work pretty good. We had to use a specialty tool to get into this tight location so you can see it's just a little nub. Um, but yeah, that goes in here and it's, it's uh, not too bad to get on and off. It is a little challenging at times, but uh, um, seems to work pretty good and everything seems to hold, so, uh, yeah, we'll put it back together, but, uh, yeah, we'll keep rolling with it and show you guys how we fabbed all that up, and, uh, then also talk about electronics. Here you, uh, can see me getting ready to try and TIG weld the intake manifold. I do mention try because I'm not a great aluminum welder. I do have an AHP uh, welder that I've been practicing on. So we won't be seeing a whole lot of me uh, attempting to TIG weld. Uh, just because, uh, yeah, my techniques are not great and they should not be a model of, of anyone's doing. Um, with that being said, you can kind of see that I'm prepping up the surface, getting it ready nice and clean. I'm trying to clamp everything together because when you TIG weld things, the heat will cause it to expand really bad and uh, just wreak havoc on what you thought was square is no longer square and all that jazz. So, um. Yeah, and the issue we were having um, with the TIG welding was trying to figure out how it was going to fit together. Um, you can see the two half cuts that we used on uh, two existing two and a half inch pipes. 
and we kind of cut them at an angle to try and merge them together. Um, all in all, I think it turned out pretty good. It was a little tricky, but I think it worked out. The plate that is mounted to this um, that you saw in the beginning video, uh, we're not going to show a whole lot of that because it was a very slow process of milling it down and trying to get it to fit um, and pre-drilling the holes and making sure everything was square. It is a very time consuming. I think it took us all weekend just to uh, get that to work out really well. It would have been a huge time lapse video and uh, we uh, didn't think it was really necessary, but if you guys have any questions, you can certainly ask them. Oh, it was, we, I forgot to hit play, but, oops. <laughs> so you'll see right there, we installed a map sensor. This is the Bosch map sensor that, um, that Power Commander recommends. It seems to work well with their stuff. Um, underneath the seats, you'll see a pretty big mess of wires. We have uh, 12 volts, or wait, this is the ground wires. These are the 12 volt wires. Um, then we have a little step down transformer that takes from five to 12 volts and that you need to run the map sensor. Uh, kind of messy right now in the process of being cleaned up, but uh, we also had the addition of the wide band too. Um, the, box, the, the bike came with uh, the dyno jet already installed on there and that's kind of the reason I went this route. Um, just for cost reasons, I guess. Just keep adding on to what there was, so. If we follow that down, it comes with a wideband sensor that we installed here. Uh, and it also has an output on the wideband too that'll feed back into the ECU. Um, so that's worked out pretty good. We haven't had any issues with that. And uh, yeah, it's worked and started and ran really well, so can't complain there. All right, and a couple of people were wondering about this over-the-top intake that uh, we made. Uh, just a custom bracket that I put on there. The original one was, right yeah, right here. This is the original guy. And the idea was, uh, maybe we're choking it out a little bit, you know, comparing the two. So we had this available, threw it on there, uh, just to see what would happen. Um, haven't really noticed much change. Um, but it's also, you know, kind of more butt dino right now at this point. So we took a drive over to Dale's place to uh, say he's got something he wants me to check out. And we're going to see what it is once it gets his opener. We spent a lot of time in Brian's cramp garage. This is my cramp garage. And the reason we're here is I want to show you this. A 1982 Honda 650 SC. <laughs> Uh, I freshened up the motor, and this is a custom tank I made. These might come off. Uh, basically, everything that was stock on the bike has been stripped off. This is all stuff that you know I either purchased or made. And this is an uh, aftermarket headlight. <clears throat> this is what's going to be going up against Brian's bike when everything's buttoned up. I need to get some registration on it and some insurance. But 
Ultimately, we're going to see, is the turbocharged bike as fast as this lighter, well, slightly more powerful, maybe, uh, motorcycle that revs to 9,000 RPM? I don't know. We'll find out.